Christina Watkins. We are hearing right now from the National Weather Service after strong storms ripped through our area earlier this morning, including Algiers Point and Uptown. Let's go ahead and listen in live. And we do have some damage across the city, all the way from uptown to the central business district down to Algiers. Our job out today is to take a look at all the damage and determine if it was a tornado and if it was what strength, whether it be an EF0, EF1. If it wasn't a tornado and just straight line wind damage, we would also determine how strong those winds were. So right now, because this is the first stop right now to look at all the damage, we do not have a determination on whether or not it was a tornado. We don't know what strength it would be as well. After I get done here, I will take some pictures. I will look at what I see. I will look at some of the construction, look at the tree damage, and then I'll follow the damage across the city to the east. This will eventually take most of the day. And by the end of the day, hopefully we'll be able to get a determination, ter determination on what this is. Uh, one of the questions I was asked is, what's the difference between an EF0, EF1, EF2? So it's all based on wind speed, but we look at the damage to determine the wind speed. So your typical EF0 is going to be a lot of tree damage, maybe some minor structural damage, you know, roof damage, um, that sort of thing. When you get up to an EF1, you start to see maybe some windows blown out. You see more substantial roof damage. Mobile homes get very damaged at EF1 and higher. And then as you get up the scale, obviously when you get to closer to an EF4 or EF5, you have some total homes destroyed. That doesn't look like what we're looking at today, but we do have a significant amount of damage across the city. So any of you all that have damage, please be safe. If you see us walking around, we're just trying to make a determination on what actually happened here last night. Do you guys have any questions? Could you coordinate the warning just based on what you've seen so far? How important was it that we all woke up at 2 o'clock this morning with the sounds of our phones and those early warnings? Yeah, the warning that you all got on your phone last night, um, that is new over the last couple of years where we, you just automatically get the tornado warning if you're in the box. And hopefully it woke a lot of people up. And our goal is you wake up and you go and take place in your safe place, you go to your safe place. Now we know here in New Orleans, we have a lot of shotgun houses. So we don't have a lot of interior rooms. We don't have any basements. So what you would do is just go to interior, as interior as you can get, as low as you can get. In a bathtub is a really great place. Those are the kind of places you'd want to go if a tornado warning was issued here. When was the warning issued? Was it, uh, had the tornado already formed? Because uh, I know we were on the air and then the, the warning came out. I believe the tornado warning was issued around 2 a.m. Uh, we're not sure yet if or when the tornado formed. If this does end up being a tornado, we'll be able to determine that based on where the damage is, what kind of damage is, and we'll match it up with radar as well. So as of right now, I don't know if or when the tornado started. We'll have to complete our survey to get to that. Taking a look at all of this damage that you see so far just on Spruce and Pine, kind of give us your assessment at this point. Well, I think it's very fair to say that something happened. Some sort of strong thunderstorm or tornado happened in the area and across the city. Um, with tree damage, it's very difficult to take a first glance and tell you what it is. So it's going to take a little bit more of an assessment to look at some of the uh, structural damage, to look at the radar, and just kind of put the pieces together. It's kind of like a puzzle. How long did that take? <laughs> Same time. How long does it usually take? It really depends on the amount of damage and the distance. So this track's probably going to go um, all the way across to Algiers. We've got a pretty wide swath of tree damage and some roof damage. So we'll try to hit all of those spots and then make a determination at each of those. So it'll probably take all day to get across the city. And how unusual is it to see so many, you know, such a long path of so much damage? Are you potentially looking at multiple? Could be, could be multiple small tornadoes, could be one long severe thunderstorm path. If you guys have ever heard of, you know, straight line wind damage, really strong tornado uh, thunderstorms can put out a swath of damage as well. So those damages look very similar, tornadoes and severe thunderstorm. Um, I would say it's a little bit, un, um, you know, some not, doesn't happen very often here in a city environment. You know, we did have that EF3 a few years ago, so we are not a stranger to having damage in the city. Um, so we'll just take a look at it and we'll put the pieces together and we'll see what it comes out with at the end. I got a note from my meet. Good. I, I was going to say, this is this be the first tornado in the city since uh, the one in New Orleans East. The question was, is this the, would this be the would first tornado be since the, um, New Orleans East? I believe so, but don't quote me on that. I actually don't have um, a good history right now of what we have, what we've had in the city or not. Would it be unusual if, the, if it went all the way to Algiers? Would it be unusual for a tornado to have gone over the river like that? 
Oh, the question would be, is it unusual for a tornado to go over the river? No, it's not. Um, I think that's a myth that tornadoes um, don't go over water. I've seen quite a few of them do that. So strong thunderstorms can put down damage across the water and tornadoes can put down damage across the water. No, me, I'll, me, I'll, I'll just, uh, just sent me a note that says that the tornado formed before the warning was issued. Um, is that just, it's just tricky that these things pop up so quickly that, that you right. might have... Right. The question was um, asked that one of the meteorologists thinks a, to a tornado formed before the warning was issued. Um, at this point, I haven't even determined if it was a tornado, and I also don't know when what the starting point of the tornado was either. So it's really unsure what that's going to be in the end. Um, there are times in the past in other areas where sometimes that does happen. Um, in really, really short, quick tornadoes, they can spin up in 30 seconds to a minute to a two minutes um, and make it very difficult to catch on radar. Um, but with this situation right now, I have not made a determination um, where the tornado started, if it was even a tornado. So we'll have to talk about that later today once all that information yeah. comes out. All right, you are listening live to Lauren Nash from the National Weather Center giving an update on what their next steps will be when it comes to surveying the damage we've seen across New Orleans from overnight storms in Algiers, Uptown, as well as Broadmoor. These are some of the pictures from this morning from Damage Uptown. We do know the National Weather Service says they will be out most of the day surveying, looking at damage like this. They said they're going to put the pieces together like a puzzle. Now, how long all of this will take depends on the amount of damage and the distance, but they do think it'll take all day to get across the city. We have team coverage for you monitoring this, and we will have the latest for you starting at 12 o'clock, as well as the latest on our forecast for meteorologist Quaylen Murphy. So join us for WDSU News at noon for the latest on storm coverage. We'll see you then.